This is a video I've been wanting to do for a while that, that compares all of the uh, N-scale GS or uh, Golden State or General Service class locomotives that SP had um, from uh, pre-war to kind of just towards the middle or, you know, onset of war. So that would be the GS1 through GS6 series. I know there's 7s and 8s, but they're kind of a, um, not quite the same as the original 6. Here, uh, as you can count, there's, um, you know, 7 models here. Um, and uh, I wanted to showcase uh, uh, two variations of the GS4. Um, and so here we go. Uh, as you can see here, furthest on the left is the GS1. Um, this is the only model that's a non-Skyline casing and uh, spoke drivers. The big deal about these is that uh, this locomotive is fairly rare and made by a company called LIK Moore. It's a Japanese company. Um, they're essentially the Cadillacs of uh, N-scale uh, brass locomotives. The detail is great. More importantly, the drive is amazing. Um, even the coupling distance is really, really amazing. So um, there's a lot of variations with this, but uh, this is a later Southern Pacific, probably after 1946 iteration, no Southern Pacific lines. Um, detail weather DCC by a fellow modeler. Um, the details on this is really great and you can tell it's a later one because some of the uh, piping has been uh, updated as well as the uh, clamshell on the top it's a single headlight and these are kind of standalone and if you weren't a discerning uh, southern pacific guy you would probably see this and you wouldn't notice that it was either a uh, non-skyline mountain or even a potentially uh, 4102 so um they're all just black locomotives but this is a neat part about them it is spoke driver and it is the only gs that's a non-skyline the tender is a slightly earlier style um even though it's got the later updates and stuff this tender is different from the uh gs4 locomotives um in addition to spoke drivers um it's difficult to model but uh the drivers on the gs ones through ones and twos were 73 and a half inch in diameter so they were a little smaller than the gs4s and fives um, if you do it in n scale and you do the difference uh, there's only probably half a millimeter difference in uh, um, in the radius of these drivers in n scale so it's really tough to, me to to determine and measure out but this is a pretty nice one i bring this up because uh you know this is a very rare model but there are potentially Ability, you could potentially try to model this, and uh, I have this project ongoing. This is a Concor Cotto uh, um, early or uh, northern S2 locomotive, and uh, it was modeled by a friend that I uh, purchased it from. Um, if you look at it from the top, it was modeled uh, and featured fairly similarly, but there are, of course, slight differences the cab differences, the water heater, and all that. But it'll get you pretty close um to a gs1 which is fairly rare and uh, this also has a sports cab up here so it makes it uh um relatively uh similar if you wanted to you can use a 3d print from track 29 um, and that tender will be allow you to use a kato uh tender frame and uh, model a earlier gs1 through three uh, tender and I forgot it's like a 2200 gallon or something like that um, don't quote me on any of these on any of these numbers um, I've had one that's kind of in process and uh, this is a 3d print that I put uh, rivet details and everything onto and decaled and put wires and brass details so you can generate a pretty nice looking model of a GS 1 2 or 3 tender just using brass parts in a 3d print and some patients um, the rivet details and all that so this will go on to my gs1 model because i can't afford one of these uh gs1 lik more locomotives next up is a gs2 locomotive so these were the first of the skylines and uh um, they were single headlight this again is a lik more a locomotive that was dcc'd and uh slightly weathered uh, by a fellow modeler um, it's got the single headlight and the GS2s have also the 73 and a half or 74 inch uh, drivers, but it's kind of taking the shape of the uh, GS4s that uh, we're familiar with or the daylights. Um, the GS2s came on obviously before the war, 
Um, and uh, this is uh, more rare because there's not a lot of representations of these. If you're a real stickler, the wheels would have stars on them uh, stipulating the type of bearing that the wheels have. Uh, you know, I'm happy if you want to point me out wrong, that's fine. Um, but the, you can see the details of uh, this model from the LIK more. It's quite good. So again, Cadillac of uh, N-Scale Brass Steam, but uh, they command a pretty hefty price. Okay, so the third one, LIK Moore makes a GS3 as well, and you can find them. Uh, Key also makes GS3s and GS4s and brass, but uh, cost considered, um, you can probably model a GS3, which is a single front headlight, a square front platform, and now 80 inch main drivers uh, and the uh, earlier style tenders. You could use model this using a, a Kato GS4 model and uh, um, track 29 prints again, this tender, this sports cab uh, update. Uh, this might not be the exact sports cab, but there's a couple of sport ca sports cabs. And of course, the front smoke box uh, door for the GS3. And you could do all that and you can uh, uh, model a GS3 fairly easily. There's some articles online about it and it takes a little bit of elbow grease and, and effort because um, one of the big things is that the earlier GSs don't have the all-weather cabs of the later GS4 series. Um, so the back is exposed and so you're gonna have to chop down the rear platform, make this cab fit on, on top of the uh, Kato chassis. Um, also uh, redo a lot of the grab irons, which I bent by myself here. Um, these uh, step ladders on the tender, on the front, grabs on the back, these are all made from Gold West model parts. But uh, you can essentially model this uh, pretty well and it turns out to be a pretty decent GS3. Um, here, everything is Kato except for the front door, the platform, and the cap, and the tender shell. The shell is made to go straight onto the Kato tender. So, next up is the GS4s that we are all familiar with. Obviously, we have a mid-war or post-war GS4 in what they call the War Baby version. Kato makes this out of the box. It either comes in Southern Pacific lines or Southern Pacific later. But this is uh, kind of good because, well, it should be Southern Pacific lines because it's all pre-1946s, which is when they changed the lettering. But there's a little leeway because not everything got switched over immediately. Kato makes this as a skirted GS, uh, GS4, but at times, you know, they started taking the skirts off for easier service, less cleaning and all that uh, during the war years. And so that kind of ended up with what we call a de-skirted or, or part daylight. And this is also a GS4, um, a Kato GS4. And you can see the all-weather cab here. These are all Kato parts here, Kato tender, everything. What I did do different on this was I kind of salvaged out and cut off the skirts on the side of the uh, Kato GS4, sanded it down, preserved as much as I can, including this side step here, painted that black. But then you can take a Concord GS4 or GS140, I think the Great Northern one, um, and you can use the lower half of their shell below the walk, and then you can kind of make it fit onto the Kato GS4. So that gets you a de-skirted GS4, and you can make this in you know full post-war uh, black or in a part daylight. And these part daylight schemes were basically you know, they were in the process of, uh, you know, servicing these things, didn't have the time to repaint them. They left things where they were and uh, took the skirts off for easier service. Um, there were even at times uh, locomotives in service that had, uh, you know, the part daylight, but even the red stripe on the uh, boiler side above the uh, walkway is still remained. But those, are, those all got painted out later on in the process. So this is where we move into the slightly different GS4 tender. I'll put up the GS3 and 2 tender uh, compared. So the rounded radius sides on and the ladder work uh, are, are different between these. So that takes care of GS4s. Um, another one that's very similar, and there were only 
two of these. And I'll note that there was quite a bit more GS4s than any other version. Um, later on towards the end, they made a GS5. There was only two GS5s and the big difference is they kept the 80 inch drivers, kept almost everything similar, but they moved to a roller bearing or I don't know, some type of different uh, um, a main driver bearing. So the drivers, if it wasn't all suited up and weathered, would have a circle on them instead of a star. They still retained the two headlights up front um, and uh, there was only two of them. I think one of, the, one of these might be on display. Um, now, this is a slightly different permutation. This model was done by hand, so um, it wasn't using conco parts. It was styrene, blast, brass rods, and everything, and existing cotto parts that uh, made up the bottom lower half. The harder part of this model is, of course, these cooling tubes, which are kind of just all hand done and, and wired in by themselves. So it takes quite a bit more work, um, uh, but it's it's a fun hobby in itself. So that takes care of a GS5, of which there are only two, 4459 and 4460. The final is a GS6. Now this went back down to a slightly smaller driver, um, and there's a couple more of these. Uh, models made. This is the LIK more. Um, this is the later tender. Um, it's kind of, you know, fresh out of the shop and uh, unweathered. Um, but at this point, they went back to the single headlights. Uh, that's the big difference on these. So um, you could pick out GS4s and 5s very easily by the dual headlights. Um, everything else had single headlights. GS1s had no skyline. Um, of note also, this number board was kind of move backwards later on in the years because um, the early GS4s and other locomotives had the number boards at the front near the classification lights, but uh, it was hard to read or see the number boards because it kind of got uh, blown out or, or glared out by the front headlights. So uh, later mo locomotives after out shop and all that, they moved the number boards to the middle is my understanding. Okay, so there's our collection of uh, GS locomotives one through six. Um, it's kind of cool to have all of them here. Uh, it's kind of up to you because, you know, what you pay to get a GS2 or 3 in brass is quite a bit of money compared to what they look like in a GS4, you know. So it's hard to commit to that. But if you have to have your definitive collection of uh, Southern Pacific uh, GS class locomotives, this is what it looks like. And probably the rarest of them all, the most desirable is this GS1 with the uh, spoke drivers. Um, quite a rare locomotive and they do run great. Just for reference, all the LIK Moors come in these beautifully done boxes labeled. There's a three numbers for each and uh, you will see these on eBay pop up, but they are a pretty penny. Um, but if you can afford them, they are really great runners. So that's about it for the GS class locomotive collection and uh, uh, thanks for your watching.